Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Office Boy Daz. Office Boy Caden. I'm Gainer. Okay, before we start, we have got a competition running at the moment, which is if you go to our video, the most famous American restaurants or the most famous restaurants in America, yeah. go into the comments section and write in the word Wrexham, as in the place in Wales, in North Wales, and you've got to subscribe to the channel as well, and you could win this very one Wrexham football shirt for this season. It's this season's brand new one. Very hard to get hold of. Very, very difficult to get hold of. So if you want to work, if you want to win that, it's size extra large, by the way, if anyone's asking. So if, you've, uh, if you're not fat, you need to put weight on. <laughs> yeah, it's not that, they're quite big, but it's yeah. nice, nice to wear, nice to wear. Something different, you won't see many of them around. Yeah. You could be the only one in your area. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, especially if you're around this area. <laughs> uh, but anyway, if you want to get into it, you know what to do now. Uh, seven ways British and American weddings are very different. It's wedding season at the moment, isn't it? It is, yeah. I've, I've never been to a wedding in my life. Oh, well, you've got one coming up, mate. You've never been to a wedding in your life? No. You have, you were best man. Not best man, you were a little page boy. Yeah, yeah but, but that I remember. I'm not going to remember a wedding when I was two. Oh, okay. Is that old you were, two? I know you were little. Yeah, two. Yeah, very three. little. Two or three. Uh, but yeah, you say, we've got one coming up. Uh, our eldest son is getting married soon. Yeah. So it'd be a nice Did wedding. So a lot of stuff to prepare for that, Aiden. Best Aiden. man, aren't you? you got Aiden's going to be speech. best man. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've, I'm well, I'm a joint best man. I'm well, in charge best of the man, best man. I'm in charge of the stag do, so you know what that means, don't you? Strippers. Strippers. <laughs> Let's go. Yep, all that good stuff. Get it down, get it nailed down. Anyway, this is seven ways British and American weddings are very different by a lot of us. So for any non-hitched American gals out there, instead of saying things like, always the bridesmaid, never the bride, just move to Britain, you'll get a much better deal. Don't get that. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to weddings. Under ordinary circumstances we would now be right at the start of wedding season. For everything you're about to hear, just insert they had a beautiful Zoom wedding even if the bride turned up late due to connectivity issues. But assuming that everything blows over, as in the pandemic, not the gazebo, some of you probably know of a couple with plans to tie the knot. And in case they happen to be British and American, here are some things they should know. Our wedding traditions are not quite the same. To gain further insight, I myself married an American. That's, that's not the reason I married her. I mean, there was genuine affection. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife was one of the lucky ones who married a majestic accent. Could the same happen to you? Thank you to DateBritishGuys.com for sponsoring <laughs> this video. This I mean, year they are on. celebrating... A majestic accent. Years. A majestic accent? From, what are you, from Grimsby? Grimsby. <laughs> Come on, mate. <laughs> of transatlantic matchmaking. Skip through this. On either side of the pond, it's traditional Bachelor for brides and or grooms to indulge in debaucherous shenanigans in an effort to drunkenly conclude bachelor life. Except there are some crucial differences. In Britain, the bride attends what is known as her hen night, and the groom his stag night. Another example of human zoomorphism that will be hard for aliens to understand. Does anyone say hen night and stag night? It's stag doing hen doing it. Yeah. 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 Just do, not, yeah. not nice. Because it might be longer than one night. It's usually, it's usually three or four nights now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. People normally go away for the weekend, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As mind this, the hen night often consists of the bride and female friends getting wasted and laughing at naked butlers. <laughs> Apparently this tradition has gained some traction in the US, where male strippers are occasionally hired in the absence of husbands-to-be. For the lads, it's all about the destination weekend. In Britain, stag nights have become stag weekends. The groom and his mates head off to Amsterdam, but definitely not because of the inhalable plant life and legalised brothels. In the US, such <laughs> gatherings are called bachelor parties. The groom and his buddies head off to Nevada, but definitely not because see previous comment. <laughs> Americans love hats. To this day, people in Texas still cite Yosemite Sam as their style icon, and the baseball cap continues to graze the heads of baseball players, normal Americans, and vanilla ice. <laughs> but there's one occasion when Americans leave the hats at home. Weddings. Coming from Britain, I thought this was notable. Back home, there's a significant amount of crossover between how women dress for weddings and how they dress for ascot. Except instead of betting on horses, they're betting on how long the marriage will last. And ever so occasionally, British men, usually the groomsmen, will don top hats. This is less of a tradition in America where wedding hats aren't a big part of the cultural landscape. To be fair to Americans though, top hats went out of fashion stateside before the war, whereas in Britain it's still illegal for babies to be born without them. When leaving the maternity <laughs> ward, we even get a complimentary monocle and brolly. <laughs> 
here's a scenario. A friend of a friend is getting married. You wait nervously to see whether or not you're invited. Months go by. Nothing. Finally, you hear from your friend your worst fears have come true. Yeah. You made it onto the guest list. <laughs> but in Britain, there is a compromise. It's possible that you might be invited to the wedding ceremony and meal, but not the after party. Admittedly, the best bit. Oh. You see, we Brits sometimes That's operate false. on a two-tier... I thought it was the other way around. I think it's the other way around. You get invited to... To the night bit, but not to, the day bit. The, yeah, the night bit. So you, you'd go at like six, yeah. seven o'clock at night. So these people... You, I normally think that's you go what I'm the doing. Day. What, at Declan's? Nah, oh. Sylvia's oh, right. cousin. Right. I feel like I'm not invited to the day bit, but I'm invited to the night bit. But I'm going to be there anyway. Yeah. I'm just going to stand outside. <laughs> <laughs> hey. hey. You, don't go to, you, don't go to, you don't go to the church or anything. You just meet up at the after party. Yeah. So it's... Which that's is the biggest... Yeah. I'd rather do that anyway. I just can't stand going yeah, to the church. Boring as anything. Yeah. We did we did a wedding this year where we went to a wedding and uh, it wasn't in a church it was in a barn in the middle of nowhere and they kitted it all out really nice didn't they yeah. sort of thing and it was a really high end beautiful, sort of yeah. beautiful yeah, yeah. and the, even the nighttime dude was there so everyone mm. went went for the whole day everyone but it was like a little chapel yeah it was yeah. yeah. Mm. Tier guest list. Those in tier one receive invites for the whole shebang. Those in tier two get to go home in time for Doctor Who. So if you can't get out of the actual wedding, tier two is the next best thing. For newlyweds, the reason for the tier system is twofold. One, it helps couples cut costs. And two, it's a handy way of keeping out the weird uncles and reducing police complaints. In the US, the general practice is to allow all of the same people to attend the entire event. Mum, Dad, occasionally Tom Hanks. But think about all of the weird uncles. Actually, no, scratch that. Think about all of the bridesmaids. Somebody please think of the bridesmaids. In fact, let's do that very thing. On either side of the pond, if your wedding has bridesmaids, there will probably be between four and six hundred of them. They are normally chosen from sisters, high school friends, and that cousin who wouldn't stop asking, have you picked your maid of honour yet? <laughs> but Brits and Americans have different customs in this department too. First of all, in America, bridesmaids are almost always expected to pay for their own dresses, making bridal parties the fifth largest pyramid scheme in America. <laughs> in Britain, the cost of dresses will often be covered by whoever is paying for the wedding, and the maid of honour might not be called the maid of honour, but the chief bridesmaid. And what Americans call groomsmen, the British call ushers. And to be clear, that's not several clones of R&B recording artists. <laughs> I think it's changed as well, isn't it? I think, I think they're called groomsmen now over here, aren't they? It's kind of, and I think the maid of honour's kind of transcended over here a little bit. I know this video's a couple of years old, yeah, a few no, years old. No, when, when um, Declan and Gabby are getting married, she, I said, who are you going to have for your bridesmaids? She said, I'm going to have four bridesmaids. And then the maid of honour is my sister. Yeah. So she... And he has, he, and he said, I said to Declan, who's who's having the suits? And he went, the groomsmen. Groomsmen, yeah. Yeah. I would have said that as well. Yeah. I've never yeah. heard of ushers. Yeah. It used to, we used to call them ushers. Usher, you used to sing, uh... <laughs> sure. <laughs> Those are reserved for the DJ's playlist. But before we get to the after party, there's the small matter of the wedding ceremony itself. Here comes the bride, signing into Skype. But three months ago, when weddings happened in person, the bride would be the last person to enter the room. At least in America, where she is normally preceded by the bridal party. Think of it as the main event after the supporting act. It's the Stones opening for Prince, the Monkees opening for Hendrix, or Good Mythical Morning opening for Lost in the Pond. <laughs> Lost in the Pond? Let's take a look at what Lawrence has to say. In Britain, this is traditionally flipped. Not only do bridesmaids get a free dress, they also get to enter last. So for any non-hitched American gals out there, instead of saying things like, always the bridesmaid, never the bride, just move to Britain, you'll get a much better deal. Ultimately, of course, all eyes will be on the bride. Well, almost all. Things that both countries consider bad luck. Um, black cats, walking under ladders, and seeing the bride before the wedding day. But on that last one, Brits and Americans adopt slightly different rules, proving once more that superstitions are grounded in rock-solid science. In America, it's traditional for the groom to see the bride once Daydream Believer is over, or once the bridesmaids have sat down. That's when the bride walks down the aisle. She's ravishing, so the groom adopts an expression indicating as much, even as the half-remembered words last night and Monica's massage parlour into his head. In Britain, the groom traditionally faces away from the bride until she's standing beside him. This is useful because it helps him to stiffen his upper lip while no one's watching. Finally, as they stand face to face and say their vows, all of that good work comes undone in a momentary undignified wobble. Time for a stiff drink. For me, this is the real main event. The Stones and Prince have left the building, if not the DJ's playlist, and it's time to hit the dance floor. 
And if you're anything like me, this cannot be done before you've quaffed at least three pints of Carlsberg. This is where the nighttime bar Carlsberg. comes in. In Britain, and this might cause a few American gasps, this is normally a cash bar. That means guests are expected to pay for their own drinks, making wedding dinners the fifth largest pyramid scheme in Britain. I suppose you've got to pay for those dresses somehow. In America, since those dresses aren't included in the budget, the remaining money goes to funding an open bar. This accounts for why I have absolutely no memory of my sister-in-law's wedding. <laughs> That's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below if you know any British-American couples and don't forget to share this video with them. For more of my words, be sure to follow me on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, we, know, we know a few British-American couples, don't I was we? Saying, the thing that they didn't mention on there, which is very different, is over in the UK, they have a um, wedding list, and so you would go onto the computer and they would have everything on there that they want, like, you know, pots, pans, stuff like that. Really? Yeah. What? Is that still a thing? What do you mean Register. pots and pans? If, Things you need for your home. Yeah, so... Because usually when you get married, you're making a new home, aren't you? But nowadays, people live together long before they get married. Yeah, but I'm saying normally, you wouldn't be living together beforehand. You'd be getting married and then you'd be starting your home together. And so you put on there. I don't know. I don't even. I don't reckon that's common at all anymore. Though. Well, John Lewis still has a wedding registry. You do. Yeah. You're right. If you go to John Lewis, shops do hold them. Yeah. Yeah. And then what the brides and grooms look. I'd never marry someone if I've never lived with them. No, I agree. I wouldn't either. You don't know until you've lived. Yeah, with exactly. Someone. That's good to know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get that guy to move in. See if he can take me off my hands. But in, but in the states. You Does give, she pass? You give cash, don't you? <laughs> yeah. So you're supposed to cover your plate. So I always give cash now to weddings over here. Yeah. I think I'm the only one that does it. Yeah. <laughs> People like kind of look at me weird. No, because if you at the wedding we went to, they had like it was like a little mailing box, and that's where you put your envelopes. Your envelopes yeah. of cash. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's over here. It's a little bit different. I know in the USA it used to be like, didn't you have to cover your plate? Yeah. And it was sort of thing. So that's what you just don't know for how many people went. So if it was like a. You know, a two hundred dollar plate, and you give them a four fifty five hundred dollar gift. Yeah. Sort of thing. That's why I would do anyway. Yeah. That was my normal. I just go cover the plate plus, plus probably it. half again. Yeah. So if it was two hundred, I'd probably give three hundred for just me. So if it was two of us, would be six hundred dollars. Yeah. So You're just that guy. Well, I thought that was normal. That was normal. I thought it was normal. We, that's what we were told was a norm. Yeah. Yeah. By the <laughs> groom. Was in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> By the groom. Yeah. No, but if you remember when, one wedding we went to. The bride actually went round and asked everybody if they had their envelopes because she needed to pay the DJ. Oh, yeah, I do remember that, yeah. Mm. Obviously, we won't mention any names. No, no. But, yeah. Yeah, I do bit, remember that. I found it, it a bit in the like, USA. Really? And it finished at, like, two in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> it was, like, weird. I'm like, where are we going now? Then everyone's like, that's it, finished. I'm like, yeah, it must be, like, an after party. And they're like, no, that's it. I'm like, that's it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm all dressed up like this. And I'm like, oh, I've got to go and get changed now. I've got the pub. <laughs> kind of waste the time. It was very strange, wasn't yeah. it? Mm. But, yeah. A lot, of diff a lot of differences there between we in weddings. Yeah. But yeah, when Declan gets married this year, it'll be a... Uh, well, it's next year now, isn't it? He gets married. Yeah, next, yeah, next May. year. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, in the build-up to it now. We're arranging everything. When is the stag do? Uh, it's going to be around about uh, April. April. Hmm. So we just got to uh, cool. figure out how many we've got at the moment. I think he's, he's brought the list down to about 300. <laughs> <laughs> so I need him to bring that down to about 30, max. Yeah. yeah. I so think it's... he's going to have to do two. He's going to have yeah. to do one with his friends and one with like his family and close friends. Well, I'll be on both of them, won't I? I might as well just tie it into one. Yeah. I don't think you'll be on the one, one with all his friends. He's yeah, all they all won't be there. Dylan is doing one. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> yeah, anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget to get in on the Wrexham shirt as well. Don't forget to subscribe. Yep. And we'll catch yes. you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.